Another soybean harvest cab cam here on the Ohio AgNet, brought to you by Finnick Equipment. Learn more about them online at finnickequipment.com. In Delaware County, just outside of Galena, and really Perry Buxton, just across the street from Sunbury, Ohio, here in Delaware County. And you're originally from Croton in Lincoln County, but you're not too far away from there now here. Uh, here in this bean field, and uh, you know, a lot of people are telling me beans are looking better than expected, but how you feel about them here? You're about average this year, not nothing spectacular like we thought they would be after having a decent, rain, decent amount of rain here during the summer, but overall they're doing pretty good. Well, you said decent amount of rain here, but I can't believe what you told me about what happened back home in Croton over the summer. Yeah, over in Croton, we had about maybe an inch, inch and a half rain total over the whole summer, and here we had probably about four or five inches within seven miles. Now, with that said, some of the corn you've already shelled uh, looking better than expected. Oh, yeah. Some of the corn I ran so far is averaging about 245 and somewhere upwards at 260. I was surprised about that for how good it did this year. Now, you might notice here uh, beside us is another combine running, and it's not quite as new as this John Deere. Uh, same paint scheme, but a completely different look. Yeah, it's a 1967 55 EB. My grandpa bought it new. And back in 2012, we had an option to sell some of his stuff to have more barn storage for our, some of our smaller equipment. And a uh, guy I know, Dick Freese, down in Tasca, he bought it and used it for about 60 acres of wheat. And this year, I bought it back from him. Now it's back home and been put to use. How, uh, how long did it take you to get it field ready? Because I know that when you dig something out of the barn like that, there's probably a little bit of work to do to get it going. Yeah, because it, it was set for wheat. It took us about an hour to switch it over to wheat, compared to like five minutes to switch this combine to corner beans or wheat. <laughs> did it run as soon as it came out of the barn? Yep. Started right up, everything ran just perfect like it did back in the 60s. How's the GPS work on that thing? Not very good. <laughs> 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 That's pretty amazing, and, and you know, obviously, there's some nostalgia there. What do you think Grandpa would think if he saw that thing running back in your field? He would love it. He'd be tickled to death to see it, and especially a 12 foot header up against a 35 foot draper. That's a big difference when you're saying the cap of the two. It makes you wonder, you know, how long it took them to do harvest. You can knock out this field here, in particular, in a couple hours, but for him, it'd take him most of the day. Oh, it'd, it'd take him a couple days to do it because. I always told Al, I don't, I don't see how it took you guys so long until I was setting that cap to the combine this fall. And I was just surprised, especially after having these two sitting side by side. What do you plan to do with it? Uh, just keep it around, run it a little bit every year. And in 2019, we're going to take it out to the half century of progress to Rancho, Illinois, and run it out there. Yeah, half That's century fun. is how old that particular one is this year. Yeah. So. Incredible. Perry Buxton here in Delaware County between Galena and Sunbury. Uh, he and his dad uh, have the homestead there in Croton in Licking County. And I appreciate you having me out here and showing off this uh, this old combine. And I'll tell you, a lot of farmers be just as impressed with that 1967 as they are with this brand new one. Oh, yeah. It's a big difference. And back then, that's all they, could, all they had back then. And that's a big combine back in this day. Been a lot of fun to watch it run. Ty Higgins oh, yeah. with this cab cam brought to you by Finnick Equipment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road. Hi, I'm Gary Fennig with Fennig Equipment out of Coldwater, Ohio, and thank you for being tuned in to the cab cam. Here today, we're at the Farm Science Review down in London, Ohio. And what we're featuring here on this particular cab cam is the Salford 5100. Uh, Fennig Equipment's been a Salford dealer for uh, eight years now, and I tell you, it's been quite the ride. Uh, Salford's really come out with some, some nice tillage equipment, vertical tillage, cover crop seeders. But today we're really focusing on the Salford 5100, where we can take the residue that we have in today's cornfield and we can bury it six inches deep going six, seven, eight mile an hour and still have that nice level finish at the end of the day. This particular unit here offers hydraulically controlled baskets. So today, as, as we see, it's fairly muddy out here at the Farm Science Review. If we do have fall conditions, this implement here can go right through the field bury the residue, but we can take that rolling basket and raise it up so we're not plugging the basket. We also have a three bar harrow back here with the uh, Salford 5100. In today's uh, corn hybrids, that, that corn is a lot harder to break down, and that's where the Salford 5100 comes into play. We also offer a lot of vertical tillage machines where we uh, can marry it with a Valmar cover crop seeder to apply cover crop, and we can do a lot of things in one pass. So if you have any questions with any of these products, 
uh, make sure you call Fennig Equipment or visit our website at fennigequipment.com.